Hey everyone, how are you all today? I hope you're all grand. Um, I've got a bit of a mixed bag with the weather today. So we finally got a break in the rain. I'm not complaining about the rain. We have needed it. Oh my goodness, we needed it. But it's been pretty non-stop for about four days. There was a break in it a couple of mornings ago. Um, if you saw the video in which I transplanted the leeks, we had about a three hour break, which is great. This morning the rain has stopped, <laughs> but I'm not convinced for how long. So I'm gonna get on. I've got loads to do because of having that sort of three, four day break. Um, I need to get flowers planted out. I need to get the sweet corn, sorry, the flint corn. I will get that in my head. That needs to go out. But today's first job um, is to do some harvesting. And let's face it, that's what this is all about. So come with me now as I dive into the broad bean patch. I'm just gonna see if you guys will be able to see. Now, maybe if I tilt you down a bit, are you gonna be able to see that? Oh no, you need to come down a bit further, don't you? Excuse the airplane. Look, there's masses. So at this stage, you just, you just want to sort of pull it in the opposite direction that the plant's growing. So the plant's growing up, pull them down. Um, I, you can let them get bigger and fatter, but the thing then is the actual beans inside will become tougher, and you might find that you actually want to skin the beans as it were which means after you've cooked them they've got a sort of shell on them which opla, um, you, you pop them out of so today I'm gonna I'm just gonna have a few out today because I've not actually got a huge amount of time for cooking and unless you're gonna do something with them straight away I would say leave them on the plants so today or later today I'm going to get into the kitchen and the idea is I shall make what I call broad bean hummus it's actually it's not really hummus let's just move you guys around a bit so you can see into here it's not really a hummus it's more of sort of like a pate a dip um, but my goodness it's good it's moorish <laughs> you will not want to share it so if you if you've got some broad beans at this stage with some nice tender little ones in them i'll let you know in advance pick about oh maybe as much as a kilo and then in the actual kitchen we're going to use about five six hundred grams of them once they're podded the other thing to say is we're getting a little bit windy at the moment and as the plants get heavier with all their pods they're more likely to actually blow right over so later today i will put some stakes around the whole bed so we'll run the whole of the outside and put a string just to help hold these little guys up a bit so I'll carry on picking and I'll see you in a minute. <laughs> this makes me so happy. Oh my goodness, this is just a super duper quick pick from about those first <laughs> three plants. I need to get my picking on. I've got about I think there's about 50 plants in there. So I really do need to start harvesting because actually down towards the bottom where I haven't looked, there are some which are massive. So these ones, the, the beans will definitely need shelling because they will have started to develop their tough outer coat. But this one, for comparison, really young and tender. I'm gonna eat now. I've been looking forward to this so much because oh they're so tiny and tender can you see that
Mm. I can't tell you how happy that makes me. So where are we now? We're heading towards the end of May and pretty much since about mid-March I've been living on stored produce. So bottled tomatoes, all the squash which we just left to dry, the onions which were dry. When I took out the last of the winter greens and the carrots and parsnips, they went into the freezer. So everything I've been eating for the last sort of two months has either come from a bottle, come from the freezer, has been dried the beans and rehydrated. And much as I love all those things, the squash, the beans, <laughs> after a few months on that diet, it does get a bit boring. And I just, oh, I've dropped one. And I just long for something green and fresh again. So, oh, where does that drop? Oh, precious, don't drop any. Mm. That's intense, that's absolutely gorgeous. Now, here's the tricky thing, is to not scoff these all in the allotment, but actually get them home to the kitchen, where I will see you at some point to do our broad bean hummus slash pate slash dip recipe. So happy picking folks. I'm gonna go back into the garden now and do some more planting. Aren't these the best times ever? So, as I was mentioning a couple of days ago, it's high time for me to get this corn out. So, if you can see, it's starting to look a bit yellow, a little bit stressed, which says to me that they've run out of nutrition in these little pots, they need to go out. The newspaper ones, I'm just going to plant whole, but the couple that were in loo rolls, let me show you. This is yuck. Hold on a sec. It's not going to work. Oh, look at those roots. See what's happened to the loo roll? It's all mouldy and absolutely rank. That's horrible. I don't really want to plant that. So what I'm thinking of doing is just um, sniffing up the side, gently peeling off the, the loo roll pot, and then dropping the whole plant in. Now, um, I've never grown any kind of corn before, sweet corn or flint corn. It's flint corn, get it in your head, Vivi. So, um, this is glass gem, which is still fairly new. Uh, so what I did was, I actually found a grower, a, an, an online blogger who's been trying this over the last couple of years, and they've kind of shared their good bits and the bad bits. So just in terms of trying to get an idea of spacing, um, that was one of the reasons, I just saw a weed, sorry, that was one of the reasons I looked them up. So I'm going to be planting them about 10 inches apart. And let me just show you them on the ground. Oh, ow. Hold on a sec. Um, what I've done, much as I did with the celeriac, I've just started to lay them out on the ground. That one's moved a bit purely because um, I'm actually a very visual person. So in terms of sort of spacing and planting, I kind of have a visual memory of how it was last year or the year before, etc. ad infinitum. But when it's something I haven't grown before, I'm not so confident to just sort of whack them in because I'm not so confident about the spacing and is my eye seeing it correctly. So um, that's just something I do, is just pop them on the surface of the ground. Um, and then it kind of lets me know that I'm getting my spacing right. Here comes the sun again. I've actually got more than I've got space for. So what I'm thinking is just beyond it where I planted some bush beans. I'm, I'm not going to get a huge yield from the bush beans, so I've actually decided to extend the block of flint corn because I'll have plenty of other beans to eat from all the climbing beans. So yeah, I'm going to extend them that way a bit. And then the important thing is 
I'm sure everybody knows this by now, with any kind of corn, you want to plant them in a block. So, whereas most of the rest of my allotment, you'll see things planted in rows, maybe one or two or three rows of something. With the sweet corn, it's gonna be in a <sighs> flint corn. <laughs> I'm not gonna get that in my head. With the flint corn, or sweet corn, plant them in a the block because they're wind pollinated. So when you get the, the, the little bits of pollen on the top of the plant and then the tassels on the ears, what you want is for the wind to give them a shake and drop onto all those little tassels. So I'm gonna get on with this. It's so exciting to do something new, isn't it? Flint corn, new. Next door to the celeriac, new. I'm just looking over there, I can see my quinoa coming up, new. <laughs> Heady days. Okay guys, I'm gonna crack on with this. Catch up with you in a minute. It's getting a bit overcast. <laughs> I'm just gonna finish off my plot jobs this morning with planting out or beginning to plant out with some of my flowers. So I'm here in my favourite little corner by the rose bush and I've got my tray of cosmos. I've got some stock, some cornflowers, some love in a mist. And I'll basically get dotted all around the allotment. And I just wanted quickly to just sort of tell the story behind the flowers. Um, I mean, obviously most of us keep some flowers on our plot for, you know, for the pollinators. Um, but for me that extra, extra special because all of the flowers I grow are for individuals, special little individuals. They're each for the different kids I looked after who um, sadly didn't make it. it. It all started about three or maybe four years ago when um, I had quite a, a big boy patient who was really shy for some reason we clicked and um, I used to be able to get a smile out of him. I used to be able to joke with him, tease him about girls. He was, you know, he was an early teen. And we got talking about my allotment and the fact that I grow veggies. And one day when I went to work, it was so lovely. Obviously his mum had sorted it out, but he gave me a little envelope. Just a plain envelope, but he kind of decorated it lovely. And in it was a handful of sunflower seeds. It was such a thoughtful gift. Oh, here comes the wind. <laughs> anyway, so I took the seeds home. I potted them up. I might just wait a sec while this breeze dies down. Hang on. Yeah, so I, pot I potted them up and they started to grow and they were growing away really strongly, gorgeous little plants. And then one day I had a really horrible shift at work and uh, he didn't make it. <sighs> Got home from work that night and there were this little collection of sunflowers growing away on my front window sill. And I remember sitting down in my window seat looking at them and just sobbing my eyes out but you know I sort of after a while I sort of dried my eyes and I was looking at these seedlings and I actually just started to remember all the really funny things about this kid and I actually started to, to smile and then I planted them in the garden and they grew big and tall and strong and every time I looked at them I'd think of this kid and it just made me smile so much so after that basically any kid that didn't make it I kind of picked a flower that for me made me think of them there are too many flowers to be honest but uh, this isn't meant to be maudlin at all. It's um, for me, I'm just now looking out the corner of my eye at the love in a mist, and that's for a little girl who 
she was seven, she loved Disney. She absolutely loved it. But she hated pink and she hated princesses, which is really weird for a seven-year-old girl. And you know, at the end of the Disney films is that kind of firework display behind the castle. I picked the love and a mist for her because they kind of remind me of that little firework display. But they're not pink, they're not girly. <laughs> so she'd approve. Um, so every year, every year, as these flowers come back and they just, they make me smile. And I think for so many of us, our gardens are a place to come and retreat when things don't go well. They're certainly a place that we come and we're happy most of the time, but I think they're also places where we come to reflect, to heal, to take some time out, to remember people that aren't with us anymore. And I know from messages you guys have sent me, I know there's a lot of you who have a rose or a tree or some sort of bush in your garden which represents one of your loved ones. So, I'm going to have some lovely quiet time now. There's, there's virtually no one on site today and this is the best time for me. I'm going to have some quiet time with my flowers. Um, probably going to start chuckling to myself as I think about all the naughtiness those kids got up to. I'll of course be sparing a thought for all their families. Um, but I will be planting them with a sense of optimism and healing and going forward and in celebrating life and lives. So I'm going to leave you guys to hear it. I'm going to have some quiet time now with my flowers. I will see you all again really soon, I hope. Cheerio.